Hey guys, thanks for checking out Quick Sessions Podcast. My name is Garrett Terrio, coming to you from Houston, Texas, inside Timberline Fitness Studio. And today we're going to be talking about intermittent fasting. Now this is a way of eating that has kind of caught fire the last couple years. And what it is, is it's a diet plan that cycles between periods of fasting and non-fasting. There's a couple different ways to do it. Some people will do a full day of fasting and then a full day of eating. Some people will do something like a a quarter of the calories they normally eat on a fasting day and then eat regular next. But what most people do is they'll do a a time-restricted feeding. It is when they will fast for 16 hours and only leave themselves an eight-hour window to eat. Now, these ratios can be changed. Some people only have a six-hour window for themselves. Some people even go as far as to only giving themselves a three-hour window. That's called the warrior diet. It's less popular because it's really hard, but you can get great results from it if you can handle it. I am not too up to date with the warrior diet. I'll have to do some reading. But as far as regular intermittent fasting, I'm going to stick with the 16 hours of fasting, 8 hours of non-fasting when I'm describing how it works to you and kind of giving you the pros and cons if you were ever thinking about doing intermittent fasting. I'm not sure exactly why it's so popular all of a sudden. It's a pretty, it's a, it's a good diet. I'm, I'm calling it a diet. It's it's not as restrictive as most diets other than the timing of it. Ultimately, what it is, is it keeps your calories in check because you only have a certain amount of time to actually consume calories. Now, I'll get into why I like it later, but I want to start with just kind of giving you the pros and cons of intermittent fasting and this dieting lifestyle that a lot of people have decided to take part in. So number one thing on the pros, one thing that I like about it is it eliminates late night eating, right? If you're disciplined and you say, okay, I can only eat between noon and 8 p.m. If you're going by 16 and 8 ratio. And what's good about that, number one, most people aren't eating healthy late night snacks in general. So eliminating that just in itself can help you create a calorie deficit, fasting or intermittent fasting or not. And then the second thing is the digestion that you would take place in your body from eating late night is something that can keep you up. It can, it's not great for your blood sugar levels to have digest, digestion going on late at night. And, and there's plenty of other things at night, you know, inflammation can increase. It just causes weight gain in general. Your metabolism slows down. And there's a whole nother podcast I'm going to do on why you should not eat before bed. So I won't get into too much. But that's one thing I consider the number one pro is you don't eat late at night. Number two, the fasting periods that you have while you're doing this diet is it creates this cellular change in your body. For instance, your insulin levels, they drop. Your your growth hormone increases. Cellular repair goes up. Because it doesn't, you're not worrying about digesting all the time. You're giving your intestines a break from constantly having to digest food. And a lot of people with these gastrointestinal conditions, a lot of times the prescription to help maybe not cure it, but handle it is intermittent fasting. Because some of these GI issues are just because the GI is working overtime so much. Uh, for instance, when MMA fighters, boxers, when they have to cut weight, it's it's real tough on their body already. But then when you compound it, multiple fights of gaining weight, losing weight, all that, it's real tough on your intestines, all that inconsistency. So a lot of those guys will develop, you know, colitis or something like that. And one of the first things they do is switch to an intermittent fasting eating lifestyle. And that goes a long way in helping them live with this condition. So that's number two. Number three, you'll just tend to eat fewer calories on this diet. It, if you are restricting yourself to this small window of eating, you're not just going to go crazy on your first meal. You're going to have a regular meal and you'll be full and you'll go about your business and then the next meal will come and it'll be a pretty normal day for you at that point. Really, when you think about it, you're just skipping breakfast. That's all you're doing. I know that can be tough when people say breakfast is the most important meal. I think that's has its place, but it's not a necessity like a lot of people used to think it was. So just the fact that you can have a small time period and just no matter what, if you're hungry before, too bad, wait till noon 
And by 8 o'clock, your last meal will have been eaten, and it's time for bed. You need to be settling down anyway. Drink some water and go to bed. Pro number four, and this one is kind of specific, is for people with diabetes. What doctors will do for a lot of these diabetes patients is prescribe an intermittent fasting diet. The reason being, what it does is it improves their insulin resistance, right? It helps lower their blood sugar, and I was reading this one study even in, in rats, it helps prevent kidney disease, which is a big time side effect of having diabetes. So that was a little specific, but it's still important to go over, I think. Number five, it reduces the inflammation in your body. It helps keeps all the free radicals in check because you're not just constantly eating and forcing your blood sugar to go up and down and creating this inflammation. You're, you're giving your body a break. You're giving your stomach, your intestine, you're giving it all a break. And that just goes a long way with repairing your body. And with that repair comes a reduction in inflammation. Number six I have on here is it improves your metabolic functions. It improves your metabolic functions essential to brain function. So what it does is when you're fasting, your body increases the level of this brain hormone called BDNF. And this is important because a lack of this BDNF has been seen in people with depression and other brain diseases. Furthermore, with this brain hormone, it's been shown mostly in rats, where most of these studies take place, but in humans also, it will help delay the onset of Alzheimer's. So not that intermittent fasting equals no Alzheimer's or delay in it, but the increase of this brain hormone at least helps out in that. So it's, you know... Intermittent fasting, increased brain hormone, increased brain hormone equals delay in Alzheimer's diseases. Still so much science to be done and research to be done on this particular aspect of it. But common sense tells me you want more of the hormone. Maybe it doesn't make a big difference, but I'm sure if I ever have Alzheimer's, I want every little bit of productive brain hormone I can get my hands on. Number seven, and maybe the most important part of intermittent fasting, is that while it's hard to study entire humans and have them eat a certain way their entire lives, in rats that were given an intermittent fasting diet, they lived 83% longer longer than rats that did not partake in the intermittent fasting diet. And I, I trained this guy, he's a scientist over at Baylor College of Medicine. I remember him telling me one of the first months I'm training him, saying that as far as living long time, calorie restriction was the biggest constant in the rats that he would experiment with. So that one stuck out to me big time. And it makes sense, right? Your body's not always working overtime. That body will last a little bit longer. And I know it's rat studies, but that's all you can really do right now. You can't just grab a human. All right, you eat this way your entire life, no matter what. And we're going to see how much longer you live. And number eight, of course, the thing most of us care about in the short term anyway is it helps you lose weight. For all the reasons I just told you, eating less calories will ultimately make you lose weight, like every diet out there. So let me move on to the cons of intermittent fasting, because nothing's perfect, right? What is not fun or good about intermittent fasting? Well, it does make social functions a little tricky. Plenty of us go out to dinner with friends, parties, whatever it is, and sometimes that leads to late night eating and drinking. If you're very set on this intermittent diet, that's going to be tough to do. Because 8 o'clock is, if you're going 12 to 8, that's not that late anymore, especially not on the weekends. Now, what I would propose is try to push your window further back. And while this is not a perfect solution, and any hardcore intermittent faster will tell you, no, you can't do that. That's BS. That's cheating. Yeah, maybe, but we all have a life. And it's better than just saying screw it and not doing anything that day. Number two is that it can mess up your pre and post workout meals, especially if you work out in the morning, right? If you work out in the afternoons, it's no big deal. But this is the one that gets me a lot because sometimes I do have to work out in the morning and maintaining an intermittent fasting diet is tough because before noon, you're not supposed to have anything with calories in it. Now, there's a couple things you can do. Number one thing you do is say it's a protein shake. My body can get over it. It's not going to not like protein after my workout. And I wouldn't say you're wrong with that. It's not true intermittent fasting, but who cares, right? The whole point is a healthy lifestyle. If the guidelines of this diet aren't met for a day, so what, right? This diet is not in the Bible and you got to follow it exactly. The second thing you can do if you really want to keep the calories low to almost zero, you can just have an intake of branched chain amino acids after you work out. It's definitely not as efficient as getting your protein and carbs post-workout, but it's something. It's something that will keep your muscles full. It'll help with muscle repair. And then when noon comes around, get a big meal in. 
So you can already see the people that wake up at 5 a.m. to work out, intermittent fasting can be a real struggle for them because what are they going to do? Make their window 5 to, you know, 3? It's not gonna really going to work. It's not really practical because you got to eat dinner. And going from 3 to bedtime without dinner, common sense just tells you and experience tells you you're just going to get hungry and you're just going to be miserable if you don't eat. The third thing with this one, kind of the cons of the diet, is it can cause a false sense of security, right? Some people may look at this and say, oh, as long as I keep my window here, I can eat all I want in that time period because I'm saving so many calories on the front and back end. Why not? And what this can do is it can cause certain individuals to binge eat. And that's the absolute last thing you want to do. That is not the point of this eating plan is not to schedule pig outs. You still have to keep eating healthy and eating low calorie foods and keeping that calorie deficit going because that's the only way you're ultimately going to lose weight. The fourth thing I have on here is that this eating style is not good for people that have suffered from eating disorders. If you've had an eating disorder, I can easily see someone saying, oh, well, I only need a six-hour window to eat, and then using that as an excuse for why they're not consuming calories with their family or around friends certain times a day. They can just say, oh, I'm doing intermittent fasting. That's not going to fly. An eating disorder, a person with an eating disorder will look for excuses to justify their eating disorder. So intermittent fasting is almost something that is perfectly set up for one of these people to have an out on being anorexic or something like that, one of those eating disorders. So I would not recommend it for anyone who has ever suffered from something like that. Don't recommend it to them. Don't tell them you're doing it. Don't explain it to them. Keep them away from it. It can cause a relapse effect if they have gotten over it. And you definitely don't want that on your hands and you don't want it for the person that has the eating disorder. And lastly, it's not something you should do if you're pregnant, trying to get pregnant, or breastfeeding. A couple of reasons. The reason you won't, don't want to do it while you're pregnant is because you're supposed to be eating throughout the day to provide nutrients for your baby. You're not in the losing weight business if you're pregnant, right? You're in the feeding this little child that's coming into the world to make sure it's healthy. You're not trying to restrict food for cal- calorie loss. And truth is, you really shouldn't be on any kind of diet if you're pregnant, unless there's some kind of allergy you're worried about. I'm not saying go crazy and eat everything, but A really strict diet with guidelines that is built on creating a calorie deficit is not something anyone who is pregnant should do. As far as trying to get pregnant, you don't really want to do this either because what it does is it can interfere with something called the luteinizing hormone. So long periods of fasting can make it harder for you to get pregnant because it messes with these hormones. And as far as breastfeeding, it's kind of the same deal with when you're pregnant. When you're breastfeeding, you need nutrients for the baby. Long periods of fasting do absolutely nothing to help you or the child. So please, 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 if you had an eating disorder or you are pregnant trying to get pregnant or breastfeeding, don't do this. And that's kind of it for the cons. So the last thing I have to say about it is I do do this myself. I follow it kind of lightly. I'm not the most strict intermittent fasting participant. The hardcore fasters would not approve of my exceptions and how I go about it, but I like to think I do a pretty good job of it, and it seems to keep my weight in check. I'm not always losing weight, but if I do buckle down, get real strict, of course I see results relatively quickly, because like Every single diet out there, the whole point is to create a calorie deficit because ultimately that's how you lose weight. You take in less calories than you burn. It's pretty simple. If you just follow the rules of intermittent fasting, odds are you'll consume fewer calories just because of the schedule of it and that'll help you lose weight. And the reason I like it the most compared to other diets is really the the bold truth. We're not keeping anything back here. If everybody had great discipline, we wouldn't have overweight people. We wouldn't have people that are not at the weight that they desire to be. We would not have any problems. So what this diet does, this eating style, is it kind of takes some of the discipline out of it, right? You, the only big, the biggest part of it is, hey, just don't eat till, we'll say, noon. One thing. You have one thing to worry about. And you'll notice the more you do it, the longer you stay on the plan, the easier it is to not eat till noon. Because if you wake up every morning, you eat at 7 a.m., every time you wake up, your body's going to think, all right, food time, and it's going to get hungry, and you're going to eat breakfast. The first couple days are tough because your body's going to want to eat early. But the more and more you push it back, the more your body adapts to it. So if most of your discipline energy, we'll call it, only has to worry about one thing, then you're already set up for success. Now, like I said, you can't binge in the middle, 
but you also don't have to make sure, oh, is this meal 350 calories? Is it 400 calories? I can eat this, that, yada, yada. It's simple now. Just be normal. Just eat normal, healthy foods like you would, except now you just cut out probably two meals of the day between whenever you wake up and noon. So it's pretty easy to follow. It can be tough in the beginning, first three or four days, I'd say. And more so, it can be tough on weekends when sometimes going out to dinner, going out to parties can push it out past your window. My advice, just push the window back. Don't kill yourself. You're not going to gain five pounds just because you push the window back one day. Use common sense and you will be fine. And I think you will find this to be a pretty easy to manage eating plan that can definitely jumpstart a weight loss routine and help you maintain it. I have no doubts. All right, guys, that's about it. Thanks for checking us out. See you next time.